Which involves two people. They meet. You found me really attractive really quickly. They fall in love. She's passionate. <laughs> they get married and embark on a relationship that's designed to be one of increasing intimacy. I really couldn't see my life without her. But that's not automatic. We have to keep working at our marriage. Because I wasn't getting much affirmation, I started getting that from other places. Our marriage was nearly over. If you start building good habits in your relationship, you'll be reaping the effects of those choices in 5, 10 or 20 years' time. I can't let my past define my future. We have to build our own reality. The aim of the marriage course is to strengthen the connection between you as a couple. Love grows us. This is not a silly sentimental idea. This is science fact. How about one that we don't really hear about? How about this one? Fun. Marriage ought to be fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point? The marriage course is built on universal principles that are relevant to any couple anywhere. In years to come, you'll look back on having built a marriage as perhaps the most important achievement of all in your lives. Stop. 
Marriage involves two people. They meet. You found me really attractive, really quickly. <laughs> they fall in love. She's passionate. <laughs> they get married and embark on a relationship that's designed to be one of increasing intimacy. I really couldn't see my life without her. But that's not automatic. We have to keep working at our marriage. Because I wasn't getting much affirmation, I started getting that from other places. Our marriage was nearly over. If you start building good habits in your relationship, you'll be reaping the effects of those choices in 5, 10 or 20 years' time. I can't let my past define my future. We have to build our own reality. The aim of the marriage course is to strengthen the connection between you as a couple. Love grows us. This is not a silly sentimental idea. This is science fact. How about one that we don't really hear about? How about this one? Fun. Marriage ought to be fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point? The marriage course is built on universal principles that are relevant to any couple anywhere. In years to come, you'll look back on having built a marriage as perhaps the most important achievement of all in your lives. Deepest valley, you're holding.
My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. At the mention of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence, fear is silent, for you wear the fear. Marriage involves two people. They meet. You found me really attractive, really quickly. <laughs> They fall in love. She's passionate. <laughs> they get married and embark on a relationship that's designed to be one of increasing intimacy. I really couldn't see my life without her. But that's not automatic. We have to keep working at our marriage. Because I wasn't getting much affirmation, I started getting that from other places. Our marriage was nearly over. If you start building good habits in your relationship, you'll be reaping the effects of those choices in five, 10, or 20 years' time. I can't let my past define my future. We have to build our own reality. The aim of the marriage course is to strengthen the connection between you as a couple. Love grows us. This is not a silly sentimental idea. This is science fact. How about one that we don't really hear about? How about this one? Fun. Marriage ought to be fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point? The marriage course is built on universal principles that are relevant to any couple anywhere. In years to come, you'll look back on having built a marriage as perhaps the most important achievement of all in your lives. Hello and welcome wherever you are viewing from. My name is Richard and I'm a reader at St Mark's Church, Haydock. Welcome to our All Together service. All Together means that there's something for children, youth and adults in this service. And it's our prayer that God will meet with you through this service. Now a word for parents. During the prayer time, there'll be a craft activity for children uh, with paints and paper, and they make finger paints in the outline of the church. Now, there is an outline that you can download from our website, or you can create one yourself. But just now, if you could get some paints and paper ready for that, that would be great. Please uh, remember that during the week, uh, every weekday, so that's uh, Monday to Friday and Saturday at 9.15, we meet together to pray uh, using Zoom. And there are details for that on our website. And if you'd like to give to the work of the church and to our overseas mission projects, go over to our website and you'll find instructions there how to do that. So as we start, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can meet together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for all that you've given us in Jesus and the calling you've placed on our lives. All the things that you have given us to do and the people you want us to be. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, let's do it. Let's do those things that you want us to do. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let's join together to worship the Lord. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we are gathered together, to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace, 
Hear the joyful sound of our offering As your saints bow down, as your people sing We will rise with you, lifted on your wings And the world will see that Our God saves Our God saves In the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we are gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings. saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that our God saves our God saves there is hope in your
most enormous boat that kept the birds and animals afloat. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and no one lived his life for him. Moses led his people through the sea, taking them away from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Moses lived his life for him. Celebrated. Restored. Gathered together. Encouraged. Supported. Loved. Reminded who God is. Hearts awed by His majesty. Eyes seeing fresh. The wonder of grace. Thankful for His awesome, unwavering love. Reminded who I am and all I have received. Challenged. Equipped. Renewed. Commissioned. Ready. Sent. I'm going to hand over to Dan now to lead us in a game. 
so I hope you're ready to be detectives. Well, hello. This morning we're playing Guess the Dingbat. Now, today's message finishes the series that we've been exploring over the last five weeks about our role on the front line of wherever we work, live or play. And so the dingbats are going to remind us of where we've been throughout the series. Let's see how much you can remember and how much you've been paying attention. I'm going to show you a few pictures which added together finish the sentence, but be warned, they get harder as we go on, which means we'll need everyone's help. Yes, I'm looking at you over 60s. We need your help and you, Mr or Mrs four year old. We need everyone's help in our game today. So are you ready? Now, the first one is pretty quick. So I'm going to give you 20 seconds to look at the screen and work out. We must glow for Jesus like a. We must glow for Jesus like a firefly. Now, Dingbat 2. Again, with only 20 seconds, we need to keep our colour like a... to keep our colour like a rainbow. Excellent. Now, Dingbat 3. Again, only 20 seconds to answer this sentence. God transforms ordinary places into holy ones, just like a Of course, God transforms ordinary places into holy ones, just like a butterfly. Amazing. Now, I'll give you 30 seconds for Dingbat 4 because it's a little bit harder. This time, you have to guess three words to finish the sentence. Here we go. God uses something, something, something when we do it with God uses whatever we do when you do it with him. That's so cool. Just do it all with him. Now for Dingbat 5. I'll only give you 20 seconds for this one. Are you ready? So don't forget that you are a... Well done. It is, of course, don't forget that you are a child of the king. Amazing. We can call God our father. And for the final one, it's today's catchphrase. And you haven't heard the talk yet. You haven't even seen the puppets. So you've only got the clues to go on. There'll be a logo at the top right, which has a similar motto. You've already seen one of these dingbats before, but I'll give you 30 seconds anyway to suss it out.
amazing. It is. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we're now going to see some people who are just getting on and doing it, living the Jesus life, wherever they are, whoever they are, whatever they are doing, doing it for him, knowing they're children of the king and just doing it. So let's do it and watch the puppets. And now Gemma will bring us our Bible reading. Today's reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 19 to 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body and since we have a great priest over the house of god let us draw near to god with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how we may spare one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right, let me give you a task. I want everyone to close your eyes. 
Okay? Have you done it? Good. Now think of something that you do every day, but you don't like doing it. Kids, that could be tidying up or going to bed. Adults, I'm sure you've got lots to choose from. Now I want you to really think about it. Imagine you're doing that task right now. Okay, now open your eyes. How did that feel? Right, now I want you to close your eyes again. This time I want you to imagine that you're doing the same thing, but for a special occasion, like a birthday or a wedding. Something you're super excited about or you really believe in. And perhaps somebody is there with you this time, helping you or keeping you company. Does that feel a bit different? Well, I'm not a morning person, and so getting up before seven can leave me feeling a bit like this guy here. But getting up early for a holiday, for example, even with a huge eight-hour drive ahead of me, is a completely different thing. I'm excited for it. I'm behind it. I usually know I'm going to have people with me. Do we get that feeling when we're going on holiday? Perhaps it's the same for you. Um, a similar kind of thing. Something When you don't want to do something, it's easier when you're behind it. Uh, and when you have support. Now we know from the last few weeks that whoever or wherever or whatever we are, we can make all the difference in the world, but it's, it's not always going to be that easy. In the book of Hebrews, which we'll be exploring today, Hebrews 10.32 tells us in the message version that we need to stick it out. So how do we do that? How do we continue to be what Jesus wants when it's so easy to get distracted or feel rejected? Our scripture today and the book of Hebrews is key to answering this, this vital question. A call to persevere. Now, when I think about perseverance, the first thing I think of is the story of Robert the Bruce, a king of Scotland who, when faced with almost certain defeat, went to hide in a cave. But it was in that cave that he saw a spider spinning a web. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a spider spinning a web, but they fail time and time again. And this spider did. It failed and failed, but it never gave up. And this legend tells us that Robert was inspired to fight back and win the battle against a huge army. Now, for us, sometimes trying to be like Jesus every day makes us feel like we're failing over and over and over again. But we need to use our faith if we want to succeed. We need to persevere in Jesus' name. In the Bible, we see great examples of this perseverance, often by nothing else but faith. We see Noah, who by faith dedicated his entire life to building the ark. Saving his family, we see Abraham, who aged 75, went out travelling for a new home with nothing except his faith to guide him. We see the mother of Moses, who by faith alone hid her son, not for one day, or two days, but day after day for three months in faith. These are all referred to in the book of Hebrews. And it's funny, when they're referred to, these giants of faith aren't referred to as heroes of the day, but as strangers, as foreigners on earth. Do you ever feel like that? In Hebrews, it tells us that each one of these giants of faith wasn't content with the world the way it was but was longing for a better world, a heavenly one. And in God's plan for this heavenly world, every one of us is just as important. We all need each other. In today's scripture, we are asked to consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, encouraging one another, but why can't we just do this thing called life on our own, on our own terms, in our own relationships with God? Why do we need each other? Well, one thing is that sometimes we can get lost in our own thoughts, in our own ways, in our old ways. And these are all times that we need others to help us back on the road. Let me show you an example of just that. Psst. Psst. Hey, Buzz! Get 
over here and see if you can get this toolbox off me. Oh, come on, Buzz, I... Buzz, I can't do this without you. I need your help. I can't help. I can't help anyone. Why, sure you can, Buzz. I'm not a space ranger. I'm just a toy, a stupid little insignificant toy. Whoa, hey, wait a minute. Being a toy is a lot better than being a, a space ranger. Yeah, right. No, it is. Look, over in that house is a kid who thinks you are the greatest, and it's not because you're a space ranger, pal. It's because you're a toy. You are his toy. But why would Andy want me? Why would Andy want you? Look at you! You're a Buzz Lightyear! Any other toy would give up his moving parts just to be you. You've got wings! You glow in the dark! You talk! Your helmet does that, that, that whoosh thing! You are a cool toy! Now, in the film that we've just watched, Toy Story, Woody and Buzz are vital for each other, and the support network around them is two. Ham, Bo, Peep, uh, Rex, Slinky and the gang, if you've seen the film, they're all really essential in helping them achieve what they need to. Could Moses have achieved what he did without Joshua or Aaron, or Aaron if you prefer? Now, I'm sure Jesus could have done it all on his own, but he chose to have support and friendship in Peter, in James, in John, in the other disciples, in the people he met along the way. And these are all examples that we need to think about, we need to follow, we need to be looking for those opportunities to live, love and lift one another. We never know just how important encouragement will be at any given time. As the message version of our scripture says, Let's see how inventive we can be, how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out. Encouraging love. Jesus himself puts loving each other as one of the two greatest commandments that God has ever given when asked. He's asked what the two greatest commandments are. He says, love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. But it's interesting because loving our neighbor is one part, but when it comes to the message from Jesus, it's our love and faith in God that will get us to where we need to go, to draw near with faith. Because doing something once is easy, right? Perhaps in our own power, but sticking at it, well, I don't know about you, but for me, that's a lot harder. But the good news is that if Jesus is in our lives, then we're 90% of the way there. What comes next is to give our worries, our stresses, our concerns to God. To submit and be fully reliant on him. To let God be the power that perseveres for us. We need to fully believe that he who has promised is faithful. Our scripture says, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, we can be confident in this faith. So don't throw away your confidence. We are receiving the kingdom that can never be shaken. And in this kingdom, Jesus is our brother. And with our brothers and sisters, we all need to be there for each other, encouraging one another, putting our faith in God and persevering to the very end. So what do you think? Let's do it. Let's put all our faith in God. Let's always be there affirming one another, helping each other on our journey. And let's not stop there. Let's get this message out there. Remember, church isn't the end goal. It's our place to meet God and worship. It's incredible. It's our place to find others like us who care for us and can help us continue on our journey. And it's a place for us to care for them too. But like the 75 year old Abraham, we need to be out there searching still. Whether that's on the phone right now or the internet. But when things settle out there, out there in the real world is where we need to go. 
Jesus suffered outside the city gates and so let us go outside our camp, ready to accept what lies ahead, just as Jesus did. Church isn't our end goal. For here we do not have an ending city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. So let's do it. Let's never give up. Let's live by our faith on our one true God and let's raise each other up every single day in the name of Jesus. Now perhaps you're watching this and you feel like you, you need Jesus and if that's the case, please get in touch with us. You can find our contact details on our website. Or perhaps you feel like you're, you're on your own right now and you don't have the network around you that you need. Again, please get in touch with us via our website or our phone number 01744 602 641 on the website www.stmarkshaydock.org. God bless. Now it's our time of prayer, and it's time to get creative. So grab some paper, or maybe the outline of St Mark's that you printed and downloaded earlier, and some paints, and use different colours to paint your fingers and make people with your fingerprints. And as you do that, think of the different people who make up St Mark's. Think about the difference that we make together. And now, over to Jenna for our prayers. So here is what I want us to do, with God helping us take our everyday, ordinary life, our sleeping, eating, going to work or school, our leisure time, and place it before God as an offering. Let's do it. In Jesus, we all together make one body. Each part belongs to the other. We all have different gifts. If it's prophesying, let's do it. If it's serving, let's do it. If it's teaching, let's do it. If it's encouraging, then let's do it. If it's giving, let's do it. If it's leading, then let's do it. If it's showing mercy, let's do it. Love must be real. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Be full of joy and hope. Be patient in trouble and faithful in prayer. Be generous and invite people around. Let's do it. Don't hit back at others, but show love. Care for others, be a friend to those who are alone. Don't take revenge. If a bully is hungry and thirsty, then give them food and drink. Let's do it. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let's sing again together our closing songs.
Pray the blessing for us all. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all and those we love today and forever. Amen. Have a great rest of the day. It's been lovely to worship with you and don't forget each day for prayer we meet at 9.15 and we're meeting again on Sunday next week at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you again then. God bless. Bye bye.
present my involves two people they meet you found me really attractive really quickly <laughs> they fall in love she's passionate 
they get married and embark on a relationship that's designed to be one of increasing intimacy. I really couldn't see my life without her. But that's not automatic. We have to keep working at our marriage. Because I wasn't getting much affirmation, I started getting that from other places. Our marriage was nearly over. If you start building good habits in your relationship, you'll be reaping the effects of those choices in five, 10, or 20 years' time. I can't let my past define my future. We have to build our own reality. The aim of the marriage course is to strengthen the connection between you as a couple. Love grows us. This is not a silly sentimental idea. This is science fact. How about one that we don't really hear about? How about this one? Fun. Marriage ought to be fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point? The marriage course is built on universal principles that are relevant to any couple anywhere. In years to come, you'll look back on having built a marriage as perhaps the most important achievement of all in your lives. i